Hello, my name is Chris Hammond with ChrisDoc.com, and in this video, part one of our DNN8 video series, I'm going to walk you through the process of installing DNN platform version 8. We're going to start off by talking about the install zip file processes we need to take with that particular file, which includes unblocking the file and then extracting the contents of that file. We're then going to set up the file system taking the contents of that file and putting them into a specific folder on the file system. After that, we have to set up the web server. We're using IIS, so we'll create a website in there with a binding for the domain name dnndev.me. Then we'll set up the file system based on permissions for that new website that we've created in IIS. And then lastly, we need to configure the database and a user for that database. After that, we can go through the actual installation wizard within the DNN platform. So let's go ahead and switch over here to my development environment, I'm running a virtual machine, which we can use to install DNN. Now, to install DNN, you're going to navigate to .netnuke.codeplex.com, choose the downloads page, and you could choose the latest release of DNN. Now, for a new install, you're always going to grab the install package. There are a number of other different packages available, but the install package is the one that you want. I've already downloaded the install package for DNN version 8. I have that file here. In order to open that file, I'm going to right click on the zip file, choose properties, and then choose unblock. After that, I'm going to right click back on that file and choose the extract all option. I'm going to extract that file to a folder here within my downloads folder. Now, we, while we wait for that to complete, I'm going to go ahead and navigate over here to my C drive. We need to create a folder where we're going to place the files for this website. I always create my DNN websites within a C websites folder. If you don't have that folder on your C drive, you can go ahead and create that. From there, I'm going to navigate in and create a folder called dnndev.me. Now we're going to be utilizing dnndev.me as a domain name because the DNS information for that domain name points back to the 127.0.0.1 IP address. It means from any computer in the world, if you try to navigate to that particular domain name, it will always try to navigate back to the local IP address. And in local development environments, that's very handy to do. So as we wait for the files to complete extracting, we're then within Windows, given those files, the folder opens back up here. I'm going to select all of the files in that extracted folder, and I'm going to copy those into our newly created dnndev.me folder. While those are copying, we can go ahead and load up IIS. I'm going to do that by clicking on Start and typing INETMGR, INET Manager. From there, we can expand down to the Sites node. We're going to right click and we're going to add a website into this node. We're going to create the website called dnndev.me. I'm going to go ahead and copy those that string, those words, so that I can reuse those down below. For the physical path, we need to choose the path where we created the folder and place the contents for DNN. And then down in the host name option, we're also going to place dnndev.me. That is where we define the domain name that IIS will be listening for as requests come in. Go ahead and click OK, and that will create our first website here called dnndev.me. We can go ahead and switch back to our websites folder. Now we need to configure the permissions for that particular site. So I'm going to right click on the folder, choose properties, and choose the security tab. Under security, we're going to click edit, and then we're going to choose the add option. We're going to add a user here in the permissions for this particular folder called IIS space app pool backslash dnndev.me. Click the check names option. Windows will underline the dnndev.me text. 
we can go ahead and click OK. That will add the user into the available permissions. If we select that user, then we can select the modify row under the allow column. Click apply and Windows will go through and apply those permissions to all of the folders and files in that particular folder. Click OK on the remaining two windows and we now have our file system configured. We have our website configured in the web server. Now we need to configure our database. So I'm going to do that within SQL Server Management Studio. I'm running SQL Server 2014, but you can choose to use SQL Server 2012 as well if you'd like. Under the Databases node, I'm going to right-click and choose New Database. And I'm going to create a database called dnndev.me. Go ahead and click OK, and that will create the database. Now we need to expand the Security node and go to the Logins node. We're going to right-click and choose New Login. We're going to create a new login for a user with the name dnndev.me. We're going to choose the SQL Server Authentication option, and then we're going to go ahead and type in a password that we can use for that particular login. I'm going to uncheck the Enforce Password Policy option. On the left, I'm going to click the User Mapping option, I'm going to choose that newly created database, dnndev.me. And then down below, I'm going to choose the DB owner role. If we go ahead and click OK, that will create this new user. And this user now has access to that newly created database. At this point, we can load up our favorite browser and then navigate to dnndev.me. Now, the first time you try to access a website, that's loaded in IIS and that is a .NET application, it might take a few moments for that particular site to load. I'll trim the video down here so you don't have to wait for my site to load. When we come back, we'll be on the .NET Nuke installation wizard. Now that the installation wizard is loaded, we can go ahead and provide some basic information here for the installation. By default, DNN is going to create a user with the username of host. We need to go ahead and give it a user a password for that user. You can change the email address now if you like. You can also change it later on. From here, we can change the name of our website. We can choose a different template or language. And then down below, we can get into the database information. For this video, we're going to go ahead and choose the SQL Server option, which is the second radio button. For our server name, I'm going to put a single period. That means I'm using a local server, the local instance of SQL Server. If you're using a remote SQL Server, you can put in the IP address of that server. Then we need to provide the name of our database, dnndev.me, and choose our security option. We're going to choose the user defined option and then provide our database username, which once again was dnndev.me. And then we're going to put in our password that we used for the newly created user. From here, we can go ahead and click OK or continue at the bottom. And DNN will begin that installation process. This will take a few moments. We'll trim the video down to keep it shorter for you. Now that the installation is complete, we can click on the Visit Website option. And that's going to take us to our newly created DNN website. Now this, once again, might take a moment to load, so we'll trim the video down while that process occurs. Here we have our newly installed DNN8 instance. Now, in a future video, we'll go through some of the basics, such as the control panel at the top of the page, and how you can go through and start creating content within your .NET Nuke website. Also, stay tuned as we create some additional videos around development for DNN, and how to use the newly released DNN8 SPA template for module development. Thanks for watching.